From fire to ash to fire again, summon forth your dragons. Command the vast dunes of the Sandakai and shape them to your will. All the while raining fiery death down upon all who oppose you. How's it going Rogues Gallery and welcome to another Flesh and Blood deck tech video. Today we are featuring a tournament winning Dromai Blitz deck. Complete with all the information that you need to take this deck to your local skirmish or to the kitchen table. We're doing something a little bit new here with the format of this video, so if you are enjoying it, please let me know in the comments down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friends. It really, really helps a lot, and it helps grow this amazing game of flesh and blood that we all love and enjoy. So without further ado, let's get on with the deck tech. And now a word from today's sponsor. It's me. Uh, I'm the sponsor today. If you would like to support me and also pick up some amazing Flesh and Blood product designed and drawn by Flesh and Blood artists, check out RedZoneRogue.com. I have playmats, I have sleeves, I have apparel over there on RedZoneRogue.com. With gorgeous art designed and painted by Flesh and Blood artist Sylvia Meliani, this Kataka's library playmat featuring our own original character Kataka in her library with her dragon familiar is a very fitting companion piece to any Dromai deck. As you can see, starting with this deck tech video and going forward, we will be including parts of the deck as a list as we talk about it. So if you'd like to see a full list, we will have a link in the description down below, but stay tuned to hear the reasons why all of the cards are in this deck. Let's talk about Dromai, our Draconic Illusionist hero. She has the standard 4 intellect, 20 starting life total, and she has some very interesting abilities. She says, whenever you pitch a red card, create an Ash token. Now, what is an Ash token? An Ash token is a Draconic Illusionist token Ash. It's a material that says, while Ash is under an object, that object has Phantasm. And so that's going to be very, very important going forward. Every single one of our dragons that we play starts out as ash and then gets transformed into the actual dragon and you will be putting the ash token underneath the dragon giving it phantasm and that is a downside that is not an upside here phantasm says when this is defended by a non-illusionist attack action card with six or more base attack destroy this and close the combat chain so that is something that we need to be very aware of and we're going to be playing around that downside we do not want our dragons destroyed by this phantasm mechanic, also colloquially known as being popped. Dromai has a second ability that says, if you've played a red card this turn, dragons you control have go again while attacking. So basically we need to pitch red cards to generate ash, and then we need to play red cards to give all of our dragons go again. And we'll talk about the dragons as we progress. So that is Dromai. We are using the Storm of Sandakai, basically the only weapon for Dromai at this point. Dragon allies you control have once per turn action for a cost of zero attack. And other than that, the dragons have no other ways of attacking. And just while I have it here on screen, this is the anatomy of an Aether Ashwing. These are tokens that we will be using in this deck. We're basically going to be summoning these tokens, transforming our Ash into the Aether Ash Wings or bigger dragons. An Aether Ash Wing, like I said, is a Draconic Illusionist token, dragon ally with one attack and one health, and they also have Arcane Barrier 1. And because of that, we're not really going to be playing a lot of Arcane Barrier in our equipment loadout because we're going to have a bunch of it through our Aether Ash Wings. So that's what the Storm of Sandakai does. Let's talk about our equipment here. And I think you have some options here, but let's start talking about what I would consider to be the standard loadout. And then we have what I would call our sideboard options. Since we are playing Blitz, we do not have an otherwise sideboard. All we have is our equipment loadout. And choosing which equipment to run in a particular matchup could mean the difference between victory and defeat. So let's start off by talking about the crown of Providence. I think this card can be swapped easily with an Arcanite Skullcap depending on what you need, but I really like the crown and it's a new card and I like testing it out. It is a generic equipment headpiece with a two defense blade break, so it is destroyed when you block with it, but when you defend with it, you may put a card from your hand or arsenal on the bottom of your deck. If you do, you get to draw a card. And so this is a great way to filter either a card from your hand or something from your arsenal that you did not want to basically essentially have a five card hand. So if you arsenal a card at the end of your turn, draw up to four and then block with the Crown of Providence, 
thereby using the ability to put that card from your arsenal on the bottom of your deck and drawing a card, you will start the next turn, assuming you don't block, with a hand of five cards, which is very strong. The big difference between that and the Arcanite Skullcap is that the Skullcap uh, says if you have less life than opposing hero, it gains plus one defense and arcane barrier three. Now, we don't really care about the arcane barrier three all that much, um, but we do care about the plus one defense. So that'll give it um, two defense and it has battle worn, so we can block for two and then one. So the Skullcap can block for a total of three, where the Crown of Providence can only block for a total of two because it is destroyed with that blade break ability. So it's a difference of one damage and basically one life, but the crown gives you a little bit more options and I like the options. Next up, we have Silken Form as our arm of choice. It has instant, destroy Silken Form, transform an ash you control into an Aether Ash Wing. And that's the mechanic I was talking about. We have an ash and it transforms it into an Aether Ash Wing. And when you transform it, you put it on top of the ash, thereby giving it this phantasm. It also has Quell 1, which is great for preventing long strings of go wide attacks. You can use Quell multiple times in a turn, once per source of damage. So this is a great against go wide decks, and go wide decks are very popular right now in the format. Next we have Flame Scale Furnace, or I like to call this King Conan on his throne. Just, that's what the art, that's what the art looks like. Flame Scale Furnace is a draconic equipment with two block and temper, which means you can block with it once. But if you block with it a second time, it gets destroyed. It also has a once per turn instant ability, and this is very, very crucial for the deck. It says for one resource, gain a resource for each red card in your pitch zone. Activate this ability only if you've played a red card this turn. Now this is going to be a great way to actually start pitching cards, you know, activating this ability so we can start generating that ash. Having three or four dragons in your hand can be very, very clunky. And having the flame scale furnace there to just be able to pitch stuff if you've already played a card, just to start generating some ash tokens is really, really good. That's probably one of the hardest parts of this deck to get going, starting to get your ash pile <laughs> stacked. So yeah, flame scale furnace is great. And also some turns you can just generate a lot of resources. And then finally, we have the Illusionist Classic, the Phantasmal Footsteps. Now this card does not actually work on your dragons, but it does work with all of our other Illusionist attack action cards. And we are playing a decent number of those. We have a lot of dragons, but we also have a lot of Illusionist attack action cards. Now the Phantasmal Footsteps has zero defense, but it says the first time an Illusionist attack action card you control is destroyed this turn by the effect of something like Phantasm, you may pay one. If you do, gain one action point. So this is a great way to gain an action point and to be able to continue the turn. It also says when you defend with Phantasmal Footsteps, you may pay one resource. If you do, its defense becomes one until end of turn. If Phantasmal Footsteps defends a non-illusionist attack with six or more attack, destroy it when the combat chain closes. So you can't block anything too strong or this card gets destroyed. But it's another way to pitch cards um, for Dromai's ability to start generating Ash, which is really, really good. And so this is our standard loadout. Like I said, you could go with an Arcanite Skullcap if you have one and if you want that extra block, but I really like the versatility of this loadout. So if you're running up against a wizard like Icelander or Kano, the Silent Stilettos, Crown of Reflection, and a Null Room Gloves are all great because they give us a certain degree of arcane barrier. Now we still want to have the flame skull furnace because the flame skull furnace is just really, really good. Um, like I said, for all the reasons, like I said before, it's just great for generating resources and it's also great for um, you know being just being able to pitch and generate those ash tokens. Because in flesh and blood, you cannot pitch unless you have a reason. And other than that, the cards are and they're okay for what they do. So the Silent Stilettos is an okay facsimile of the Phantasmal Footsteps. Whenever an attacking ally you control dies or an attack action card you control is destroyed by Phantasm, you may pay three if you do destroy the Silent Stilettos and gain an action point. Um, obviously the Footsteps is reusable so you can get a lot more value out of its ability and you can also block with the Footsteps. It also has Arcane Barrier 1. Crown of Reflection um, I don't know if I've ever used this ability from Counter Reflection in Dromai. It mostly just has Arcane Barrier 1, 
but it has an instant ability of destroying Crown of Reflection. You destroy an Illusionist or a U Control. If you do, you may put an Illusionist or a, from your hand onto the arena with cost less than or equal to the aura destroyed. Activate this only during your action phase. We do have some auras, but I, I, I don't know. I could see some cases for it, but don't, don't dwell on that that much. Mostly we use this for Arcane Barrier. Same with the Nauru Gloves, Arcane Barrier. And then last, we have the Helios Miter. This one can come in against other really, really big damaging classes that are have hard to deal with attacks. So uh, Kano um, or any Guardians that have these Dominate attacks, this can be pretty good because it says instant for two, prevent the next one damage will be dealt to you uh, by a source of your choice. But you can use that multiple times on the same source, which is really, really good. All right, next up we have all of our dragons and all of our Dragon Matters cards. Starting out with Invoke Tomaltai. This is the biggest dragon in the deck, and he is quite a house. He costs five to play, a legendary invocation to transform a chosen ash you possess into Tomaltai. Go again, it also blocks for three. Tomaltai is a big, beefy dragon with five attack and five health. And when he attacks, you're gonna reveal the top two cards of your deck. For every red card revealed that way, you get to put that many minus one defense counters on an equipment your opponent controls. And then if that piece of equipment has zero defense, you destroy it. So this is a great way to just absolutely eat away at your opponent's defenses, starting with their armor. Also, he's a big, just five for five. Very, very strong. Invoke Tumultai is the top end of our deck. We are running red dragons, but they're not all red cards in the deck. Next up, we have Invoke Chromai. Now, all these dragons have the same sort of mechanic. You invoke them and you transform an ash you control into the dragon. And like I said, that means that the dragon will have that phantasm mechanic. So keep that in mind with all of the dragons. Um, Chromai is a really, really strong one. It is a zero cost Draconic Illusionist action invocation. Blocks for three, transform an ash you control into Chromai. And when you do, Chromai is a three attack, two health dragon that says once per turn, when Chromai attacks or leaves the arena, gain an action point. So this is just a great way to get multiple action points if your dragons already have go again from our Dromai hero ability, and they will if you <laughs> play this because invoking it counts as playing it, then you'll get an additional action point to do more stuff. Really, really great for going wide and attacking with all of your dragons. And it also gives you insurance against folks who want to pop your dragon. We're running one Chromai. Next up, we have the mother of dragons, Invoke Uvia. Same kind of deal. This one costs two to play. And then when you transform Uvia, she becomes a one attack six health dragon that says at the start of your turn or when Uvia enters the arena, transform up to one ash you control into an Aether Ashwing. And that's what we talked about earlier, these little tiny dragons. So we would like to amass a large quantity of ash through pitching and through other effects and then make a horde of dragons. And Uvia is great at that. We are running a single copy of the Uvian. Next up, we have another big mother of dragons, except this one is a little dead. <laughs> it's a little dead. This is Invoke Necria. This one costs three to play. Same kind of deal as the rest. And when you invoke and transform her, she becomes a four attack, seven health dragon that says, when Necria deals or is dealt damage, put a minus one counter on her and create an ash token. So these two together can you know, as a tag team, create an army of Aether Ashwings. Next up, we have the dragon from Mysteria, Invoke Miragai. Same kind of deal as the other dragons, though this one costs one to play, which is great, a low cost dragon to play. And when you actually invoke Miragai, they become a two attack and four health dragon that says, your first dragon attack each turn loses and can't gain Phantasm, which is excellent. It means we can attack with impunity on the first dragon attack each turn, which is great. We are actually running two mirror guys because this effect is so important to our deck. Similarly, we are running two Invoke Kylorias. Once again, same kind of deal. This is a one cost dragon. And when you transform Kyloria, they become one of the best dragons in the game, even though they only cost one to play. 
4 attack, 2 health. Whenever Kyloria hits a hero, gain control of an item they control. However, if you don't gain control of an item this way, draw a card, which is great. Drawing cards in card games generally is fantastic, but in Flesh and Blood, it is extra good because those cards count as you know defense for yourself as well as resources as well as offense so drawing cards is fantastic and for that reason we are running to invoke kyloria and that is our suite of large dragons we have more dragons to talk about though with rake the embers this is an absolute staple card of any dromai deck this is a one cost draconic illusionist action with go again and it says create an ash token then transform up to three ash you control into aether ash wings this is a great way to just absolutely swarm the board with these pesky little ash wings. And, you know, it's kind of like a death by cuts strategy backed up by very, very strong and fearsome dragons. So Rake the Embers is fantastic. And we are running two of the reds as well as two of the blue versions. Blue version is the same thing, except you only get to transform one ash instead of three. We also run personal favorite of mine, and a Red Zone Rogue spoiler card. We have burned them all. This is a zero cost Draconic Illusionist action aura with go again. So when you play, you get go again, it costs zero. And it has once per turn, when a dragon you control attacks, it deals one arcane damage to each opposing hero. Now that is obviously great in multiplayer, but it's also really great in 1v1 situations as well. Just getting in that extra damage every single turn you know, especially if it's like split damage, if you're coming in with just, you know, the simplest thing, coming in with just your little Aether Ashwing, or if you're coming in with something like Tomaltai, it's just gonna be really, really a pain in the butt. And this card sticks around for a while, but it does not stick around forever because it says, at the beginning of your end phase, put a raise counter on, burn them all, then destroy it, unless you banish a red card from your graveyard for each raise counter on it. So it doesn't last forever, but it will last a decent amount of time. We are running two copies of burn them all. Now let's talk about our suite of attack action cards. We have a good number of them, as you can see here, ranging from illusionist attack action cards, generic attack action cards, and some draconic illusionist attack action cards. We're gonna start off with one of the best ones in the entire game with Miraging Metamorph. This is a one cost seven attack, illusionist attack action blocks for three. It has that phantasm mechanic. And we're gonna see that phantasm mechanic a lot going forward. When Miraging Metamorph is destroyed, create a token that's a copy of an aura you control, maybe like burn them all here. So Mirage Metamorph is great. Your opponent is put into a situation where they either have to deal with the seven damage here, and if they are somehow able to destroy it, you can still get value out of creating a duplicate of an aura that you control. We do have several other auras in the deck that are not burn them all. We'll talk about them when the time comes, but just keep in mind that ash are not auras. So you cannot create a copy of an ash token. Uh, and as well as our Aether Ash Wings are not auras either. So just keep that in mind. So we're running two Miraging Metamorph, incredibly powerful card. Next up we have Ember Ma Senpai. This is kind of similar to Miraging Metamorph actually, but a little different, maybe not as good. This is a two cost card, attacks for eight, blocks for three, has Phantasm. And when this one is destroyed, we create an Ash Token. Very simple, heavy damage dealing attack, but we create an Ash Token off the back end if it's destroyed. We are running two of these. Next up, we have a Flesh and Blood staple, the Ravenous Rabble. This is a zero cost five attack card. Block for two has go again, but when you attack with it, you reveal the top card of your deck. Ravenous Rabble gets minus X, where X is the pitch value of the revealed card. We're running a lot of reds, not all reds, but a lot of reds. So this will often come in for uh, four, which is great. Also, since it's a red card, um, and we just play it to get go again, it just gives all of our other dragons go again and just does great synergy with the deck. Speaking of which, we have Billowing Mirage. This is a one cost, three attack with go again. No Phantasm on this one. Blocks for three. When you attack with Billowing Mirage, transform up to one Ash you control into an Aether Ashwing. So it's kind of attacking for four, right? Because you're attacking with Billowing Mirage and then um, you will now have a go again for all of your dragons and you can attack with them. So uh, you can transform one of your Ash tokens into an Aether Ashwing and then immediately come in with the Ashwing afterwards. So we're running two of the red versions there. We also have a favorite of mine, Sweeping Blow. This is another one for three and blocks for three. Uh, when you attack with Sweeping Blow, create an Ash token. Pretty simple here. And if you're pitching a red card to do this, you would also create an Ash token. So this can sometimes create two Ash tokens, which is great. Um, no, uh, there is no uh, Phantasm on this card. 
We're also running a blue sweeping blow as well. It's just a one for one, but you still get to create that ash token, which is great. Uh, we also run one of my personal favorite cards in the entire game. Absolutely love the art. Uh, this is Spears of Surreality. This is a one for five, blocks for three, and it just has Phantasm and Gogan, which is great. And we're gonna see that again. It's another one for five with Gogan and Phantasm, but when this one is destroyed, we create an Ash token, like the other Senapai in the deck, the Ember Maw Senapai. And then rounding it off is another one of my favorite cards. I just really like this character in general. This is a zero cost, Star, star, illusionist, attack, action. Okay, so this is a weird one. This says, when you play or defend with fractal replication, it gains the abilities and effects of all illusionist attack action cards on the combat chain. And then its uh, power becomes the power of the greatest one on the combat chain and the defense becomes the defense of the greatest one on the combat chain. So this is really, really good when you play a bunch of really, really strong cards. Uh, specifically illusionist attack actions that have go again. Then you can finish that up with a fractal replication. It's kind of clunky because it doesn't do much by itself. You need other cards to actually make good use of it, but if you can, it's very strong. So I like this card quite a bit. We're only running one because of its clunkiness. All right, let's talk about some of those auras and other cards that I mentioned earlier. We're gonna start off with Passing Mirage. This is a zero cost illusionist action aura. If you're a fan of Prism, you've probably seen this in play a lot. It says your first illusionist attack each turn loses and can't gain phantasm. Now that does apply to our dragons because the dragons are illusionist attacks. So this is great. So this is virtually another couple copies of Invoke Mirror Guy because we are running two of them here. But these ones also apply to our other illusionist attacks as well, whereas Mirror Guy only applies to our dragons. It also has this spectrum mechanic, which means it can be attacked by our opponent and if it is then it gets destroyed and the combat chain closes and the attack does not resolve which is different than attacking the dragons if someone attacks the dragons they can attack the dragons and then get go again and all that good stuff but attacking a card with spectra they will not get to go again it's just immediately done so we're running two passing mirage we're also running a very similar card with pierce reality this is another zero cost illusionist action aura both of these block for two the first illusionist attack action card you play each turn has plus two. Now, that does only apply to the attack action cards here. So illusionist attack action cards does not apply to the dragons because they are not attack action cards. So keep that in mind. But we do get a nice little buff on the first one we play each turn. I mean, coming in for nine with a Miraging Metamorph is, is pretty good. Is pretty good. And then finally, for our little pump cards here, we have Uprising. This is a very interesting card. It says the next four draconic attacks this turn gain plus one and then go again. It costs a zero to play and blocks for three. It itself is a draconic action. So what's great about this is all of our dragons are draconic attacks. So this will pump up all of the dragons, including the Aether Ashwing. So it's pretty good. It's kind of like a zero for four. Um, and it's just great for these go wide. This is a little bit better than a zero for four because a zero for four, your opponent can just block with a single card, you know, block for three and absorb three of that. But it, it goes wide, right? It's a zero for four across four different attacks, which is actually pretty good. It puts your opponent in a tricky situation where they're gonna have to block with a ton of resources to, you know, completely deal with Uprising. So I like this quite a bit, but it's also kind of clunky too because you really need to have the draconic attacks and not every attack in our deck is draconic. And finally, let's talk about everything else. This is kind of like a mishmash of defensive cards and other really interesting things. So first up, we have Sigil of Solace. This is just a zero cost instant. It just says gain three. Now, why do we want this? Well, it pitches well in our deck because it'll help generate Ash. And then also we can just play it and then, you know, have the ability to give all of our dragons go again. So if we have just a swarm of dragons and then nothing else except for Sigil of Solace, we still want all of our dragons to have go again from Dromai's ability. So just being able to play a red card for zero is pretty good. And so that's what this does. It's a zero and we gain three life. It's also really good in Blitz because um, you, it's hard to tell what your opponent is going to be in Blitz, right? You don't know going into a match. So if your opponent is running a lot of arcane damage stuff and we don't have a lot of arcane damage prevention, though we do because of all of our Ash Wings, still gaining three life is really good. Gets around stuff like Dominate. It's just really solid. Next up, we have another really, really solid one with Sink Below. This is a defense reaction, a zero for four, and we can put a card from our hand on the bottom of our deck if we do draw a card. It's just an absolute flesh and blood staple, so we are running two of the Sink Belows, really good against dominate attacks and whatnot. 
And here's some spicy tech for this deck. This is Talisman of Recompense. So this is a generic action item. It costs zero to play, has go again on it. Whenever you pitch a card, if you would gain exactly one resource, instead destroy Talisman of Recompense and gain three. So this is a great way for us to be very, very red heavy, but still generate a lot of resources for those really, really big go wide turns or for turns where we want to invoke Tomaltai because it costs five to play here. So really, really great. I love this card in this deck. And it itself is a yellow pitch card, so you know you can you can use it for pitch. And then last but not least, we have the fabled card, the Blood of the Drakai. Now, this card you don't really need it in this deck. I put it in here because I think it's fun, and I have a copy. Right? If you don't have a copy of this, you can put another uh, Sigil of Solace. You can put another copy of one of these dragons in that you, there's only one of in here. You can have a lot of options here. But if you have this, I recommend trying it out. What does it do? Well, it's a legendary item, which means you can only have one of them in your deck. And it says, when you pitch Blood of the Drakai, the next three Draconic cards you play this turn cost one less. Now, it's a red card, right? So we can get the value of pitching red cards. But we don't have too, too many Draconic cards in the deck that can take value of this. All of our dragons, certainly. Not burn them all because that costs zero. But we all our Senpais here, the Billing Mirage, the Sweeping Blows. We can get some decent value out of this. So I really like this card. I think it's fun. But if you want like a much more consistent deck, or if you don't own a copy of this, you can swap it out for a good number of things. And here is the full deck in all of its glory. Please let me know what you think of the deck in the comments down below. Do you have a similar Dromai list? How's it doing for you? Do you take it to your locals? I'm genuinely curious to know. So like I said before, like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends. Let's grow the Flesh and Blood game and community as much as we can. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, you got to forget it.